Kylie Ray signed a long-term deal with Impact Wrestling. Josh Alexander defeats Eddie Edwards. Was that the right move? The TNA reunion show comes and goes. And in case you missed it, my interview with one half of the Impact Wrestling Tag Team Champions, the walking weapon Josh Alexander. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. This is the walking weapon Josh Alexander and you're listening to Shooting Up North. Hey folks, Lewis here. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's staying safe with this uh, crazy coronavirus pandemic that's that's got the world on lockdown right now. Uh, but uh, we're not here to talk about the coronavirus. We're here to talk about Impact Wrestling. So let's get into it. Kylie Ray signs a long-term deal with Impact Wrestling fantastic news for impact wrestling kylie ray extremely extremely talented great addition to the impact wrestling roster so glad that they made this announcement uh, that she is joining impact wrestling and she is just going to be an absolute huge huge asset to impact wrestling i've seen many of her matches uh she's been up here um in uh, in ontario for alpha one uh for other promotions and she is just so damn good she is just so damn good and and now that um, Impact Wrestling has her locked up uh, for the long term, I'm so stoked to see what Kylie Ray is going to accomplish here in Impact Wrestling. I'm guessing she's going to have the uh, the Knockouts title um, once the wrestling gets going again. I, I would say she's going to have it. I would say by the end of this year, or or at least by the beginning of 2021, uh, she should have the Knockouts title. She's just very very good and. I don't know the terms of her contract. I'm guessing it's a it's a three year deal. I'm guessing it's a three year deal because that's basically the that's a normal contract that they're that they're the standard contract that they're handing out uh, to um, to these um, newcomers to Impact Wrestling. Uh, so um, my guess again, three year deal. And I'm sure she can wrestle for any independent promotion that she chooses, much like. The other wrestlers that have been signed, like Josh Alexander, for example, uh, Chris Bay, they they basically can wrestle for other promotions as as well. So um, I'm I'm guessing it's it's the same type of contract. But nonetheless, very very happy to see Kylie Ray. And you know I'm looking on on when you go onto the the uh, Facebook page, the social media, and Impact Wrestling, they they announce the uh, the signing of Kylie Ray. Seems like every other comment seems to be that uh, this is a Bailey ripoff. You know, granted, granted, when Bailey, before Bailey, I think Bailey recently turned evil, uh, but before when she was the uh, the happy, smiley Bailey, you, you could you could draw some comparisons there. You could draw some comparisons, but but Kylie Ray is Kylie Ray, Bailey is Bailey. Uh, so I mean, Kylie, it's not like uh, they just they just found someone off the street. Impact Wrestling and said, you know what? Let's uh, let's create let's create another Bailey. You know, Kylie Ray's been wrestling for a while and she's had that character for a while. So um, yeah, just let's let's put the let's <laughs> let's put the Bailey the Bailey uh, comparisons to rest for now and let's just see what what Kylie Ray can do in Impact Wrestling. Actually, some of them are really dumb. And there's one comment I'm going to read it. I have no idea what this guy's talking about. He says that. That Kylie Ray is a China virus version of Bailey. Now I don't know what the hell that means. What what is he trying to say? You know that, that a China virus version of Bailey. I, I still I can't seem to wrap my head around that one. I'm only trying to be a little positive here, and a lot of people are being positive, but I don't understand these people that have to be negative. And uh, whenever Impact Wrestling signs somebody, they have to be negative. A lot of people are being positive. A lot of people are congratulating Kylie Ray on the signing. Uh, a lot of people are are saying it's a great signing for Impact Wrestling, and uh, it's, it's how it should be. I mean, this woman just signed a uh, a long term deal after uh, being in the Indies for so long, and she she uh, got her deal, three year deal, and you know. 
it's, it's this is a good thing. It's it's a good thing for for Kylie Ray. It's a good thing for Impact Wrestling. You know, it's not a time for for any negativity and compare her to somebody in the WWE. It's just it's just it's just dumb. It's just stupid. And there are people. <laughs> there are still people out there who 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 are really non wrestling fans. Who really don't pay attention to what's going on. They're just trying to be cute. Where they're they're saying that oh, oh she should have signed with AEW. AEW is a better promotion. Ah, uh, hello. <laughs> She was with AEW, but she decided to leave. She decided to leave AEW because it wasn't the right fit for her. And that's a decision that only Kylie Ray could make. Whether that upsets you or not, it's it's too bad because you're not making the decision. It's not your life. You're just a fan. You know, Kylie Ray is making the decision. AEW wasn't a right fit. And there are a lot of rumors as to why she why she left. And I, I don't know what's true or what's real or what's false but uh, nonetheless she she was with AEW she left AEW and now she's with Impact Wrestling and she's going to be an absolute star an absolute star for Impact Wrestling and I congratulate Kylie Ray for signing this contract and very excited to see what she brings to the Impact Wrestling roster now Josh Alexander Josh Alexander this week defeated Eddie Edwards not sure if that was the right move because, you know, granted, the coronavirus has knocked out, you know, all the upcoming pay-per-views. Uh, so any storylines that we see now, they're not going to be leading to any pay-per-view because, you know, this damn coronavirus knocked out the, pay- the pay-per-views. But, but this was taped before uh, the coronavirus cancellations took place. And Eddie Edwards was in the main event at Rebellion uh, with Eddie, uh, with I'm sorry, with uh, Michael Elgin uh, and um, the Impact World Champion Tessa Blanchard. So it was a three-way match for the world title. Eddie Edwards, involved in that match, loses to Josh Alexander. Now, I don't see the logic there. I mean, I don't see the logic there at all. I mean, Eddie Edwards loses to Josh Alexander. So if if you if say the coronavirus never happened and Rebellion was going to take place. What's what? Where's the logic in that? <laughs> where's the logic of having the guy that's in the main event world uh, main event match for the world title at at your next pay per view lose to Josh Alexander? Now nothing to take nothing to take away from Josh Alexander. Dude is super super talented. I absolutely love Josh Alexander. Uh, he's been on my show many times. I've interviewed him many times. Super super talent. One half of the Impact Wrestling World Tag Team Champions. But having him defeat Eddie Edwards when Eddie Edwards is scheduled to be in a world title match might not have been the best decision to make. Eddie Edwards should have gone over in that match. And then the North could have probably attacked Eddie Edwards. And then Tessa could have came in for the save. No way. No way Josh Alexander should have won that match. Or what they could have done is after... Uh, after um, if the pay-per-view happened and I my prediction was Michael Elgin was going to win the uh, the world title after that pay-per-view happened then you can have Josh Alexander defeat Eddie Edwards because I, I think ultimately ultimately they want to build Josh Alexander up as a major single star so I can understand him getting a win over Eddie Edwards just just not the right time especially when they thought at the time that there was going to be a huge huge uh, world title match that Eddie Edwards was involved in so I just thought that was a a poor decision and if Josh Alexander is is listening dude dude bro bro you know no no offense to you like I said before you're you're great you're terrific I'm sure you'll be back on my show again but uh, it's just just how I feel I don't I don't think um, I think Eddie Edwards should have gone over in that match uh, no doubt and another thing another one that that didn't quite make sense to me was um was Cody Deaner defeating, you know, cancel culture Joey Ryan. That didn't make sense to me either because they're trying to build up cancel culture. They're trying to build up the new Joey Ryan, in my opinion. And they have Cody Deaner defeat him in, I think it was the second match that he's uh, appeared in as uh, this new character. He won the first match. It was a tag team match with, uh, with RVD. They beat the Deaners. But then... Um, Cody Deaner gets his, gets his revenge over Joey Ryan. I, Joey Ryan should have should have um, cheated and snuck out. Should have stole the victory from Cody Deaner um, in that one. Um, because right now it's to me, uh, oh, Joey Ryan cancel culture new character. He's already lost Cody Deaner. So where where does he go from here? 
right? Where does it go from here? I think what they should have done is before there. I know cancel culture is in a few now, kind of in a few now with um with uh, the Deaners. They should have had Joey Ryan come out, you know, three, four, maybe five weeks. Cut promos, you know, maybe go over on a uh, on a few wrestlers, n- not involved in a in a feud, and then uh, then have the dean or saying, you know, we're fed up with this cancel culture, and um, three four weeks down the road, then then we could get the feud uh, with the deaners. But as it stands right now, this cancel culture thing isn't really doing much for me, and I, I, I think they kind of killed it, in my opinion. Uh, not not to be negative, not to be negative, but having Joey Ryan lose already to Cody Deaner, I think they've kind of. Uh, kill this unless you know unless they're planning something where um i don't i don't i couldn't i wouldn't even know what they're planning i wouldn't even know what they're planning but uh two questionable wins there two questionable wins josh alexander over eddie edwards cody dina over joey wyatt so i don't don't see the logic in either of those wins um okay so um the TNA. Uh, let's talk about the TNA reunion show for a bit. I got to admit, I got to admit, I was, uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed, I enjoyed the reunion show. I kind of popped when Hernandez at the end did his, uh, did his dive uh, to the outside onto the other wrestlers. I, I popped at that. That was a, that was a great. I haven't seen that in a while, so it was, it was good to see that. And initially, I, um, I wasn't. Um, I guess I wasn't gung ho. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't gung ho about uh, the TNA reunion show. I, I wasn't looking forward to it at all. But I, I watched it and I thought it was. I thought it was terrific. I thought it was great. I really enjoyed it. It was good seeing the old TNA um, um, branding. Uh, it was a good show. I enjoyed it. And uh, it's a shame that the pay per view is not going to happen. Uh, they said it's p- postponed the pay per view. So I'm thinking that they are eventually going to have it and. You know, I'm changing my opinion. I'm I'm all for it, hundred percent. I'm looking forward to uh, when this whole coronavirus thing is over and they're able to have shows again in front of crowds. Uh, speaking of which, um, suddenly suddenly it seems like every other every other uh, person that posts on on uh, on Impact Wrestling um, social media, whenever they post something up on Facebook or, or Twitter, they seem to forget that. That Impact Wrestling is taped in advance, and they're blasting TNA. Uh, see, look, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking TNA, right? Because, because the TNA reunion show. But uh, Impact, they're blasting Impact. They're blasting Impact uh, for having shows in front of crowds. They're like, like, they're like, well, shouldn't people are like? What about social distancing? What's going on here? Why are they having shows in front of crowds? And of course, people have to jump on and remind these these quote unquote fans that Impact Wrestling tapes in advance. Um, but some people still they're saying, "Oh, they tape a year in advance." Ugh, ha ha ha! They don't tape a year in advance. So, but I've 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 let a, a couple of people know that they that these shows are taped a few weeks in advance. One thing I have noticed, though, which drastically has been cut down, is the amount of people complaining. That Impact Wrestling taped in advance. Actually, I, I actually have even seen a few people saying, "Oh, it's so refreshing to see wrestling in front of a crowd." See wrestling in front of a crowd. You know, thank goodness Impact Wrestling tapes in advance. You know, I'm like, wow. You know, people people used to just blast them. Oh, they tape. Uh, they tape weeks and months in advance and and uh all the spoilers we all know who's winning but nobody's really complaining about that now well, gee, uh, it's it's interesting you see taping in advance has its uh, advantages so it's a, it's a good thing uh they tape in advance and um i was thinking though you know with them taping in advance i mean i know they just did their their group of shows in atlanta and um Thinking about what's going to happen after Atlanta because all the tapings have been canceled, uh, all the all the pay per views have been canceled. You know, we're not going to see anything on Twitch. We're not going to see anything on Impact Plus um, for an extended period of time. And I know the WWE and AEW uh, they have their big uh, TV contracts, so they have to they have to uh, do their shows in front of empty in in front of no crowd in front of in in empty arenas basically uh, i know i think aew has a few wrestlers are on the outside making noise which is nice uh but that basically they're empty arena matches so um thinking i don't think uh, that'll work really for impact wrestling and thinking what's impact wrestling going to do you know i was reading a um an article on that and apparently impact wrestling has um a lot of new fresh content 
content, quote unquote, in the can, according to this article. Uh, so we'll see what they can do. Here's here's my uh, here's my opinion though. Here's what I think they could do. I know they just had a uh, group of tapings in Atlanta, and say they have four or five weeks of tapings. Um, I'm sorry, four or five weeks of shows from those tapings. Uh, here's what they can do. My opinion, and hopefully, you guys listening, you know, if you agree with me, um, just let me know. I think. To extend it, to extend it from five to ten weeks, maybe they could cut the impact show down from two hours to one hour. You know, I, I, I it's just just my opinion. You know, because they have five weeks of shows, you could turn it into ten weeks of shows. Uh, if you have six weeks of shows, if you could stretch it out to six weeks, if you have content for for six weeks, you could you could stretch that out to 12 weeks for for three months you can have three months of fresh content uh and and i was reading also they do have some some new content uh from the las vegas shows as well so say you have say you have um eight weeks of 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 two-hour programming cut it to one hour you have 16 weeks i think that's a good idea because basically don't know how long this coronavirus thing is going to last 16 weeks is four months i'm guessing by the by that time we should be okay we should be having shows in front of crowds again but it may not be a bad idea to to reduce it to one hour uh but then again i'm not making that decision uh, just just an opinion on my on my part and um we'll see where it goes hopefully they'll have enough content to uh, to last us through this whole coronavirus mess um one more thing I like to touch upon. What I want to do is I want to talk. What I one thing I might want to add to the show is um, I'm watching a lot of independent wrestling, and I'm always looking for talent that I think would be really good in Impact Wrestling. And I did find one guy. Actually, I've known about this guy for a while, uh, but I was watching a Limitless Wrestling show. And he was on there. Uh, his name was Daniel Garcia. I don't know if anybody is familiar with him. If you're not, look him up. Daniel Garcia. On, uh, look him up on YouTube. He wrestles for Limitless Wrestling, C4 Wrestling. He was wrestling for Smash Wrestling up here in Ontario. Wrestles for numerous, numerous promotions. He's an absolute machine in the ring. And he's, I think he's like 21 years old. I think it would be fantastic, a fantastic fit in Impact Wrestling. And he's so talented too. He's so smooth. He's a submission machine. He actually tapped out Josh Alexander uh, to win the C4 um the C4 Wrestling Heavyweight Championship uh, up here in uh, it was in Ottawa uh, a few months back. Fantastic, fantastic wrestler. Um, great fit for Impact Wrestling. So Daniel Garcia, check him out, and hopefully you'll agree with me that he could be a terrific fit for Impact Wrestling. All right, so. Recently, I conducted an interview with one half of the Impact Wrestling Tag Team Champions, uh, the walking weapon, Josh Alexander, a huge fan. I spoke to him numerous times, uh, had him on my show, uh, on various different shows. Um, and in case you missed the interview, it was a really, really good interview. That interview, I'm going to add on to this podcast right now. So enjoy my interview with the walking weapon, Josh Alexander. Hello and welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. We are heard here on the Impact Lounge. And this is the first interview I'm doing for Shooting Up North here on the Impact Lounge. And I couldn't ask for a better guest. I've spoken to this guy many times before, and I'm, I'm so happy he's coming back. And I always enjoy catching up with him. He's one half of the Impact Wrestling Tag Team Champions. He's also the Destiny World Heavyweight Champion. I'm very happy to welcome back. To the show, the walking weapon, Josh Alexander. Josh, welcome to the show, man. Thanks for having me back, dude. Yeah, it's my been a pleasure. Months in the making, I think so. Yeah, no, I'm glad you're back. You know, I, I say welcome back. This is technically your first time on this show, but I, I, I know we've spoken many times before, so that's why it's welcome, it, welcome back. So, and anytime uh, we get together, it's it's a thrill. So, um, I'm I'm very happy that we're doing this again today, my friend. Yeah, so you were on a flight uh, sitting next to Muggsy Bogues. I saw that on uh, on Facebook. So tell me all about that. Well, the, 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 you went to your seat, you saw Muggsy Bogues there, or how, how did that all happen? It all happened kind of by chance. I, I had a five hour, I was supposed to have a five hour layover in Charlotte last weekend coming back from Kentucky. And when I landed, I realized there was a flight leaving in an hour. 
And I called American Air and asked if I could switch my flight. And they said, yeah, you just you have to pay the upgrade fee because there's only first class available. And I said, yeah, sure, whatever. Whatever gets me home sooner. And I paid the okay. upgrade fee. And when I went to get on the plane, Muggsy Bogues was directly beside me. So, Wow. That must like, be- I recognized him right away. I just didn't want to say anything. So I waited for a solid dozen people to ask for a photo with him first. And then, you know, I mentioned a couple things and... You know, he talked way more than I did, actually. So, he was a really cool guy. So, is he is he a fan of Josh Alexander? Was he a fan of uh, of you? Did they know who you were? Or? I, I I'd be lying if I said I talked about myself at all. So I didn't tell him I was a wrestler or anything. Oh, okay. I didn't talk to okay. him about wrestling. I'm just a lifelong basketball fan. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, he 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 chatted me up about the All Star Game a little bit, a little bit about Charles Oakley, and uh, okay. you know, the Raptors' 25th anniversary that he was going to. Actually, that's why he was flying to Toronto. So. Yeah, the Raptors going to repeat this year? They're having a great season, man. Do you think they'll repeat? Uh, if I was a betting man, I probably wouldn't bet on that, but I'd be pleasantly okay. surprised if they did. Okay. Well, well, I got my fingers crossed. Hopefully they could, uh, hopefully they could uh, stick it to Kawhi Leonard for leaving. So um, that's 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 what I'm hoping for, man. Uh, so let's talk. Outbreak sacrifice um, happened last weekend. The North had two fantastic wins uh, against the Rascals and uh, AC Romero and Larry D. So what, what were your thoughts on the show and um, on both shows? And what were you thought, uh, your thoughts on both matches? Uh, I mean, it was good to be in Kentucky. I, I mean, just that second show in Sacrifice, especially in the OVW building, was really cool. I, I tweeted out that I think us against the Rascals is one of the more hard-fought tag team matches we've had an impact altogether in the past nearly what is it 10 months now since we've been tagged yeah eight, eight to ten months something like that i'm not really paying attention to that um okay so that was that, that was really good and i mean friday night stepping in there with ace romero and uh larry d uh i was i've, I've wrestled with ace romero before uh i was more interested in getting there with larry d and seeing what he had to you know bring to the table so was, i've never even seen him wrestle really because we've just been in opposite ends of the indies, and you know we're coming together in Impact for the first time, and I was pleasantly surprised with him. So I think he's got a yeah, no. future ahead of him. Yeah, the 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 I was watching on uh, on Twitch, uh, actually Twitch and Impact Plus. Uh, like I said, you and the Rascals, you guys absolutely tore the house down at Sacrifice, man. It was just a, such a tremendous match just to open the show with that match, and uh, it, it, every other match, it was, I'm sure all the wrestlers in the back, like we got to follow this. No, that must have been a tough act to follow, but just a tremendous match. How was your chest, though? I sort of picked up your chest. Your chest was really beaten up pretty badly from all those chops. Yeah, my like my chest uh, from over the years from training and wrestling is pretty callous, so it doesn't really bruise from chops. A lot of people bruise pretty easily. Mine used to, but it's been beaten down over the years. Uh, but I got a he connected with me a, a bit around my collarbone in areas where I haven't really been. You know, beaten up before, so that was pretty black and blue after it. But you know, that's that's something that I enjoy. So I'm a weirdo like that. <laughs> you know, so you would, you, you enjoy getting out, chopped so. in the chest? Yeah, if I'm gonna dish it out, I want to take it back. So you know. okay. All right, actually, uh, there's one move that you do that I want to ask you about. I, I don't know how you do it without hurting somebody. It's the power bomb to the knee. Every time you do it, it looks like you're gonna kill the, the your opponent. If, if I may ask, how do you how do you do that without actually hurting someone, or are you actually hurting someone when you're doing that? Um, I mean, I'm, I've never asked if it does hurt them, <laughs> and I've never okay. taken it. So, uh, okay, I, I don't know. It might hurt them. They just might be too afraid to say something. But, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, it, it looks, looks, looks like every vicious. time I see that. Yeah, it looks like every time it looks like their spines are just exploding every time yeah. you do that. But that's that's a great move. Maybe uh, maybe one day um, maybe one day I'll I'll, you, I'll see for myself. Maybe uh, at an indie show I'll let you do that to me and see. Um, you know. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I I don't want any of that, Josh. I don't yeah, want sign a few waivers first. Uh, yeah, okay, man. That, that yeah, that's the, the smart smart businessman. Sign a few waivers first. Uh, so AC Romero, Larry D. Um, I know you mentioned Larry D. Uh, you were pre- pleasantly surprised. Um, do you do you see them as credible threats to uh, to the Impact Wrestling World Tag Team Titles? Um, oh hell no, 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 no. They got a long way to go. You know, me and Ethan Page have been tagging for like almost a decade. And, okay. uh, you know, I know it's only been almost a year in Impact, but we we have that much experience that we bring to the table. And I don't think two guys just being paired together on happenstance are going to be like a credible threat, no matter how big they are. Okay. 
So. Yeah, I was going to ask. I, I know with uh, with the Rascals, uh, not not the what match of sacrifice, but you did the the double uh, power slam where you caught. Um, uh, oh, who was it that did the backflip? You caught him and yeah, that was Des and Trey. Des, yes, Des and Trey. Uh, I was thinking um, I would really be impressed if you could do that with Ace Romero and Larry D. I, I would be impressed too, but that would mean I'm a superhero <laughs> and I should be doing something else with my time. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, was, that's true. It's that's a couple true. big boys. Ace Romero but, has to be at least 430 pounds, so he's he's oh. two rascals put together and then some. And then, then you got Larry D. So yeah, probably don't don't try. You'll 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 hurt your back. Don't no, no. yeah. So when you when you caught when you caught um uh, Des um, it, it, you made it look so easy. Was it as easy as it looked, or was it, it um oh, you just made it look easy? It was really difficult holding both of them up, up in the air like that. I mean, it was like I I don't know. Like their combined weight, they're probably something a little under four hundred pounds, and like I. I lift pretty heavy at the gym, so like I can squat 400 pounds five times right now, and so catching them and walking around with them isn't that much, you know. Of okay. the, the walking around with them on my shoulders and the difficult part, catching them and, and just understanding how to control other people's body weights and how like their body weight functions while moving, that's the difficult part, and that's just something like over the years I've from picking people up, picking people up that don't want to be picked up, picking people up that you know, are moving too fast or too slow and understanding how, you know, the body moves and how it reacts. Like, I, I'm pretty experienced with that. So, you know, I, I'm pretty comfortable right. catching people in any situation like that just because I understand those things. That's the difficult part. Okay, so the, you, you beat the Rascals a number of times. Uh, who do you think is the next um, real legitimate threat for the Impact uh, Tag Team titles? TJ, TJP and Falaba, maybe? Who, who do you think would be the, the next in line for the shot? I think TJP and Falaba are definitely the next in line. Uh, whether they succeed or not is a different story. Okay. They got, But we got Desi Hit Squad. We got Deaners. Um, we haven't really done much with either of those tag teams. And, uh, you know, once we get through them, I don't think there's anything left for us to do unless Impact starts signing up hot indie tag teams for us to run through. Because we've been running through the competition now. It's going to be nearly a year by the time it's all said and done, I think. So. Yeah. You, know, you, you mentioned indie um, indie teams. I, I know um, uh, the North have wrestled uh, many teams on the indie scene, such as the Space Pirates, uh, the Flip Brothers, uh, Flight or Fight. Um, any of these teams you would like to see uh, possibly an impact in the future? Uh, yeah, there's some talented teams out there. I think, uh, you know, Besties in the World are one of the more, like, sought-after tag teams left on the Indies with the most experience. We've we've actually had a few. We had a cage match with them in St. Louis probably six months ago. Uh, they're really talented. They're good. We'd like to, you know, I'd like to see them in Impact. Uh, Flip Brothers are really good. They're, they're young, though. They have a long way to go before I think they can step onto a television program and be, like, able to contribute. Like, a lot of people are learning on the go. With this, and they get signed really early, and like they're completely capable. They're very talented, but uh, you know, just to be comfortable in these situations, like me and Ethan are, because combined, we're almost like 30 years in wrestling. So, yeah. you know, we came to the table, and like the comfort's a big thing, because that with that comes confidence, and with confidence, just you know, comes success. So, uh, yeah, I would say the besties in the world, though. Okay. Would would you say that the North are, without a doubt, one of the best tag teams, if not the best tag team in, in all of professional wrestling today? I, I I mean, we say it on every single promo, and okay. we're not saying it because we're lying to ourselves. So, yeah. Okay. And if anybody has a debate for it, just keep giving us more tag matches. Every time we go out there, we just try to steal the show, and we try to make sure that everybody recognizes us as the best tag team in the world. So I think we've been pretty successful with that so far. Now, uh, we talked about tag team wrestling with the North. Is there a time that uh, maybe in, down the road, some point in the future, where you want to say, well, you know what? The North has done all we could do. I think it's time for me to see what I could do as a solo Impact Wrestling star. Uh, and yeah. do you think that do you think the Impact, uh, Impact World Heavyweight Championship will be around your waist one day? You know, I got tagged by a podcast that was released probably last week that discussed this i think okay it might have been yours <laughs> it was actually it was yeah. mine it was yeah. mine actually it did discuss it last year that was one of the topics you as a yeah. solo uh and i'm glad we're talking about it 
Um, yeah, well, I, I think me and Ethan were both uh, very capable of being single stars in any company. We proved that over the Indies for like oh yeah, oh yeah, the last ten years. We like I'm the Destiny World Heavyweight Champion. He's been freelance champion. I've been AEW champion in Chicago through that territory. Um, we know that as singles we're top guys, and as tag teams we're just you know a tag team that can't be touched by any team because we could be that successful as single stars and we can just do it all but uh we can definitely we have definitely discussed and think that uh world championship runs are in both of our futures whether or not it's me first or him first we know that like this tag team run we're going to run it until it runs out but then like i said if we run through all the competition what's left to do we're just going to get bored and complacent so there's always new goals to be had Okay, fair enough, fair enough, and, and I'm glad you gave my uh, my show a little plug there. So if anyone's listening, they haven't listened to the show, go to uh, go to YouTube Impact Lounge, and I talk about uh, Josh Alexander being a solo star. Uh, so uh, check that out. Uh, so over a year ago, a um, little over a year ago, Scott Tamora gave you that uh, three year contract in the um, the Destiny Wrestling uh, ring. Uh, so how would you rate your time so far in Impact Wrestling and uh, uh, do you have any regrets at all? Um, but well, I'll, I'll let you answer the question. Uh, I have absolutely no regrets. Uh, when go. I signed that contract, I did so to get a visa so that I could enter the States on the Indies. And I did okay. it so that I could get on a main stage of a major wrestling program, such as Impact Wrestling, and show that I belong. And not only that I belong, that I can thrive and be one of the top guys in the company. And looking back on the year... I, I discussed this with Ethan Page last weekend. Like, I, I don't think, I don't think I could have had a better year. I, I was there for maybe three, four months. We won the tag team championships, and since then, every single pay per view, every single major show, every single major singles match I've got an impact. I've shown people that I belong, and like, I don't think it's up for debate that like, whether it's on a microphone or a promo in a wrestling match when you give me 20 minutes on television or in a tag team match with Ethan Page on a pay-per-view that we don't show that like we're the best in the company and we can do anything in this business. So, you know, that's my goal. That's, uh, that's what I bust my ass working to, you know, do and show people every single day. And, you know, I, I don't think it can be any better. So now that you're able to wrestle in the United States, you must have a, you must have a crazy schedule. I mean, you must be getting, you must be a, a, a really, really in demand. Everybody, I'm sure everybody would want you on the show, and you've made a lot of uh, debuts. Um, uh, Limitless Wrestling, I believe. Um, you, was it Limitless? No. Yeah, it was Limitless Wrestling you just recently debuted in, right? Yeah, Limitless. Yep. Uh, I, I've debuted in, uh, I've wrestled all over in the past year, but like yeah. coming up at the end, towards March and April, like it's it's pretty obscene i'm flying all over from thursday to sunday a bunch of these weekends and i get to do my first wrestlemania weekend which is gonna be awesome and uh yeah oh it's 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 a crazy schedule but it's exactly what i asked for so yeah no it's uh it's if it's well deserved too man you deserve every bit of success uh, that you're getting right now uh Recently, also, you regained the the Destiny Heavyweight title. Um, you became, I believe, I believe it's the first two time ever, first ever two time Destiny Heavyweight Champion. You defeated Marty Scurll. Uh So, um, how does it feel being a two time champion in Destiny Wrestling? I mean, it, it feels like it's back where it belongs. And when I lost it, you know, okay. I wasn't happy about it. So I had to set a goal to regain that, and I got my shot, and I made the best of it. Uh, I've run through now Pete Dunne and Marty Skrull, like the two arguably top UK wrestlers in the world. So now I think I just need to beat Will Ospreay to get like the trifecta. So hopefully <laughs> Destiny go. can make that happen and I can run through that whole country. There you go. That would be a great match. Be... Strong Style is all about, you know? Oh, yeah, that would be a great match, you and uh, Will Ospreay. Hopefully... Hopefully something, uh, hopefully something get worked out with New Japan Pro Wrestling and Impact and uh, make that uh, match happen. Uh, do they do they still have the working agreement with Noah, or is that uh, or is that done? Impact. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Elgin is actually there right now for okay. a tour of a couple shows. They've sent Eddie Edwards. I've been busting Scott Demore's balls every single loop to try to get sent there because I've never been to Japan. I think I'll thrive there, and it's my dream. But yeah, you know, everything happens when it is supposed to so i just have to be patient i know it'll happen eventually 
Yeah, that, that was my very next question. I, what I was going to ask, when are you heading over there? Because you would be tr- tremendous out there in Japan, hopefully soon, hopefully soon. I, I mean, your, your match against Marafuchi was fantastic um, here in uh, Windsor. Uh, again, I think you would be absolutely fantastic in Japan. Uh, I, I, I agree. I've wrestled Kaido Kiyomiya, who's their former champion there at NOAA. Yeah. He had the title for almost a year while he was in excursion in Canada. We wrestled for 45 minutes in Kitchener for PWA. It was one of my favorite matches all of last year, so... Or, sorry, 2018. Alright, so, uh, back to Impact, um... Well, we're talking about Impact, but uh, away from Japan, uh, Impact's been taping shows uh, in many different locations, you know, here in Windsor, they've been in Mexico, they've been in New York. Do you have a little favorite location uh, where they um, where they do the tapings at? My least favorite is New York, not okay. because of New Yorkers or anything like that, just I am not a city guy, I'm not about traffic, I'm not okay. about taking Ubers that cost a crazy amount of money. Okay. Uh, my favorite place so far, uh, Vegas and Mexico are tied. Okay. Because when we tape in Vegas, we tape in Samstown Casino. We stay in Samstown Casino. So everything's in house. We don't have to. Like, my room is a 30 second elevator ride up from the venue. Wow. So it's it's that's just cool. a very comfortable place to tape. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, in Mexico City, I, I just I love wrestling in Mexico. The crowd last time, especially my, my singles match with the Kingo, was very receptive this time. And, uh, you know, they like good wrestling. So I always have a good time when I'm there. And the food's great. What are your thoughts on, on, on Tessa Blanchard winning the Impact uh, World title? I know a lot of people on social media feel that a woman shouldn't have the world title, which I strongly disagree with. But uh, just want, wanted to get your opinion on that, uh, your thoughts on, um, on her being the, the Impact World Champion and people who feel that a woman shouldn't be a world champion. As a wrestler, I have no problems with it whatsoever because i think we're all wrestlers and if we're good at this and if we have a following and if we can draw eyes to it doing what we do best which is wrestling then you're deserving of being world champion um as a wrestling fan i'm also a fan of it but i think that you need to be very creative with how you write and book a show to make the interest you know increase rather than decrease from the initial pop of having a woman world champion so i think that impact you know they have to be very diligent with how they write the show moving forward with feuds and whatever else they do so that they keep the interest peaking into whatever they go into i don't know what it is um that's that's me as a wrestling fan from the outside looking in but i i think the writing team at impact in the last year is pretty much untouchable so i think if there's any team that's up to it it's them all right um yeah and i i i agree as a wrestling fan and Tessa Blanchard as a world champion, absolutely nothing wrong with it. I, she she deserves it. She's a fantastic talent, uh, and um, I just I, I kind of ho- was hoping she was going to defend the title at Sacrifice against Ace Austin and not have it a non title match. But um, uh, she's, hope- she's one of the most hardest working people on the roster. She presents herself as a star. Anytime we're at a signing or anything like that, like if our table has ten people, her table has a hundred. So, yeah. I think I think the title is exactly where it needs to be right now. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, another question I want to ask. Uh, I want to talk about fans for a little bit because uh, they seem to have this misconception about Impact Wrestling. And since you're on the roster, maybe you could you could clear a little things up, a uh, few things up. Uh, some fans on social media are still saying that Impact Wrestling doesn't pay their talents. Now you're signed to Impact Wrestling. I'll ask you the question: Does Impact Wrestling pay their talent? Yeah, very well. Yes, of <laughs> course, very, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, people I don't know say why. whatever well, they want to say. It's yeah, it's just it's just to get a rise out of things. That's what like that's what Twitter's about. That's what all that stuff's about. And uh, like I say it on the I, I host a Twitch show, a throwback show with my wife every Wednesday night. Yeah. On the Impact Twitch show. Yeah. And uh, like I was an extremely huge TNA fan. TNA was how I found Ring of Honor and independent wrestling and all that through AJ Styles and Loki and all these people I saw on TNA on Wednesday nights. So I grew up kind of as a fan. TNA got me back into wrestling. So I'm a huge fan. But in like 2013, 2014, when we entered the dark ages of Impact Wrestling, I wasn't a fan either. Yeah. And I heard all the horror stories, but like, what what, what can I say? I don't know anything sure. at that point. But I, I can only say what happens now. And I, I've heard things from the past where those things might have been true. 
but ever since I started a year ago, everything's been turned around. Everything's been great. So yeah, and 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 I'm and from a fan, I I want to say that Impact Wrestling has been absolutely fantastic. It's not perfect. I I don't love every single thing that it does, but that's every promotion. But uh, um, most of the stuff that's done, it's it's fantastic, very entertaining, and um. I'll remain an Impact Wrestling fan for uh, for a very long time, and hopefully you'll be on the roster for a very long time as well. So, uh, but you still have about two you still have two years left in the deal, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, um, hopefully you'll sign another long term contract when that deals up, and <laughs> you'll be with them for a very 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 long time. So, non related wrestling question. I've always been curious what's what's uh, what's Josh Alexander's favorite movie of all time. Oof. You put me on the spot. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry okay, about here, that. wait. One second. My wife's right beside me. I'm going to put her on the spot and see if she, how well she knows me, okay? Uh, okay. Okay. Hey, what's my favorite movie of all time? Casino. Casino? Oh. All right. She might be right. Yeah. Martin Scorsese's Casino, Casino <laughs> yeah. with De Niro and Joe Pesci. Okay. That's, uh, that's a pretty good movie. She um, only remembers not that. My, my she favorite. her watch it with me, and she went. <laughs> okay. She watched five minutes and said, this is your favorite movie? This is terrible. And she shut it off and put on Step Brothers, which she'd seen 5,000 times. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, per- first of that's No, Casino was a decent movie. I saw Casino. It was a little too long. I think it was over three hours, but it was a decent movie. Um, but uh, Braveheart. I'm a Braveheart. That's my, that's my favorite movie. That's a long time. movie, too. What are you talking about? Yeah, but, it, but it's, it's longer non-stop. than Casino. It's no, it's nonstop, nonstop action. Well, Casino was okay. That every every bit of Casino, Casino was good. Braveheart was great, so I I I, I could put up with it with Braveheart. So I, but, I love long movies. Interstellar is one of my favorite movies of all time too. And that's, okay, that's a Christopher Nolan movie. It's three hours long. I have not but seen I, that. I'm one. a sci-fi geek, so I'm into that. So Any thought-provoking uh, wa- sci-fi movie? So do you watch? Uh, are you a Star Wars fan? I'm a huge Star Wars fan, not Star Trek. Have you been watching the man? Not not Star Trek. Just no, Star Wars. not Star Trek, but Star Wars. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's the same thing. I am not a big Star Trek fan. Like, have you been watching the Mandalorian on uh, on Disney Disney Plus? Oh, that that's been watched and put put away already long ago. I was okay. <laughs> weekly downloads on Friday and watching them while I'm on my trips. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Okay. Uh, I'm up. To, um, I just got Disney Plus. I'm up to episode five. It's fantastic. Uh, Baby Yoda is probably the greatest Star Wars character of all time. So it's gonna make them a trillion dollars. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. If it hasn't done, if it hasn't made it them a trillion dollars, it might be two trillion dollars that they will be making with that. Exactly. Um, so, um, so what do you do when you're not wrestling? What does uh, what does uh, Josh Alexander like to do? In his downtime, I know you have a you have a beautiful family, uh, terrific kids. Um, but so, what do what do you like to do when you're not wrestling? That's that's basically all my time, right there. Okay. Yeah, everything is spent kind of at home <laughs> when I'm not wrestling. Uh, my my me time is honestly just going to the gym every day. Okay. That's my my hour to two hours where I can just tune out and usually like every other day I'll do cardio and every other day I'll do weights. So on my cardio days, I just try to watch all the wrestling I can while I'm on like the stairs at the gym or something like that. Okay. And then, uh, cause like, I'm still a fan, but then when I'm home, my wife has the network or something else on TV all day long, like it is right now. So, you know, okay. it's always kind of around <laughs> me, but yeah, it, there's not, there's not much time for anything else when you have a nearly two year old and a five year old running around. So, yeah. Well, the the two year old, um, I think you uh, you did a very you put up a very cute post a while ago. And you called him the crawling weapon, which was which was fantastic. Yeah. 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 That was that was my that was my five year old first, and then okay. that was my two year old. So. So if they if they want to get into if they want to become pro wrestlers um, down the line, what um, what uh, would you would you support it or would you would you sit them down and talk to them about it? what 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 would your be? Uh, what would your reaction be if they wanted to again to pro wrestling? I mean, I support it, but I'm a maniac, so I probably wouldn't be able to train them <laughs> because okay. I, ex- I I expect too much of everybody. Like me running the wrestling school, it's been extremely difficult okay. with that because uh, I find like this generation, they're they're very like. Uh, like I, where I'm extremely passionate and committed, and like I, I don't want to ever fail at anything. Some people I find fail and they just give up, 
and they just they accept they can't do it rather than working at it to be able to do it so you know it wouldn't be good for me to train my children if they want to wrestle (laughs) okay do you still have the school are you still uh you still doing the school it actually shuts down in two weeks oh okay i'm sorry to hear that i'm sorry to hear that Um, sorry my schedule is getting to be quite insane and as i said with these two boys and you know everything else i want to have more time at home and uh it just wasn't meant to be so that's fine okay i had a good year i I managed to train a couple people and uh there's one guy named ridley he's pretty much the only student i had in the entire class that came in completely untrained previously and I completely okay. trained him up from the ground up, and he's already wrestling shows. So he'll right. be the one true graduate of my school. And other than that, it's there's a few other students and Jody Threat who have come there to be retrained. But yeah. Okay. All right. Would have you, would you ever consider starting your own promotion? I know um, Ethan does no, has Alpha no. One. No. No. Okay. No. 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 <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Of course, I'll never ask. I'll never ask you that again. I promise. I don't know how people run shows. It's. It, it would be insanely stressful. Okay, okay. Like I said, uh, that uh, I will I cross that question off. And I'll write never ask Josh Alexander this question ever again. Um, all right. So um, let's talk about C four. Uh, C four. I, I know you've had some tremendous matches uh, against two young um, wrestlers, Daniel Garcia and uh, one of my new favorites, Junior Benito. Uh, two fantastic matches. Uh, what is your opinion on both, and do you think that um, they have they potentially could be major stars in uh, in the business of professional wrestling? Yeah, absolutely. I, I like. There's a lot of people like not to discredit what I just said, but like there's a lot of people I think can be major stars one day okay. in professional wrestling, but it's just all into what they put into it. So like I find over the years, like I could have said that about countless people, but they just got comfortable and complacent in the spot they had. So being a big fish in a little pond per se, like being the main event at a C4 was good enough for whatever they wanted to achieve. Me, okay. like I achieved that five or six years ago and I was always like, what's next? I need a new goal. Like I always need to be moving forward where some people just get complacent and they're happy in the situation they're in. So as long as they, they always want to keep moving forward, they can be as successful as they want to be. Cause they're both very talented. They're way more talented than I was at the stage they're at in their career. So. All right. It's just that you said that I, I know Scott, the more, um, uh, I know he, one of his things now, he goes into the ring with the contract he did it with you, uh, AC Romero, Larry D. If so just, just, Say at lockdown, he stepped into the ring and and was there to offer somebody a contract. Who do you, who do you think? Well, let's not use lockdown as an example. Like any any show, uh, who would, who would you like to? Who, who do you think Scott Demore, uh should step in the ring with uh, and offer a three year contract to? If if you were Scott Demore, who who would you be? Who would be your next next pick for that? Uh, I I can only really speak to Canadians. Okay. Because like otherwise, I don't really see many people around. Like I would have said Chris Bay, but he's been signed. Uh, okay. Other than that, uh, I would probably say Giselle Shaw or Aiden Prince. Okay. I think. Yeah, I was both. gonna say Aiden Prince. I was gonna say Aiden Prince. Yeah, Giselle Shaw though. She uh, she was asking what she needs to do to get noticed and all this stuff, and she was challenged, and they told her to go out and make a name for herself, and she couldn't go to America because of the obvious visa issues. So she got on a plane and moved to England. And, like, honestly, she's on every major show. She's wrestling every major person, and she's improved tenfold. So, you know, she's done the work to be able to get noticed, I think. So her or Aiden Prince, yeah. What about Lofisto? I know you had a great match with her at C4. I always always figured, well, how come she's not signed by anybody? Um, the... Like that's an, that's another thing. Like you can bring up like Lefisto or Tyson Dukes, stuff like that. People have been around for a long time. They present themselves as like great professional wrestlers. Their draws on independent wrestling shows. They always perform great. Um, it, but it's like a right place, right time thing. I could have easily been just like them in three or four years, but I was in the right place at the right time and I got noticed. Everyone knows that they're good and they're dependable and Lefisto's great, but it's just what they have for them at that moment, right? So if they don't have a spot right. that they are, they think they're capable of filling, and it's not like a competitive thing where they think, oh, she's going to get signed by another company, I don't think there's a sense of urgency to sign her at this immediate second. 
Okay, fair enough, man, fair enough. So March 22nd, let's talk about March 22nd, Alpha One Wrestling. Uh, you're going one-on-one with Moose. Is that the first first time you guys are meeting one-on-one? No, that'll be our second singles match. We wrestled in a cage match at Destiny World Wrestling probably okay. three or four years ago. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's actually, I know uh, in the advertisement um, – the Impact Plus logo is on there. Is that going to be streamed on, on Impact Plus, or is that just being taped uh, for Alpha One Wrestling? Yeah, yeah, I don't think they're streamed live, but they're, okay. they will be up on the app within probably, I think it's like seven to ten days post-show. Okay, cool. That's going to be... Uh, this, this, this most recent show made it up in under ten days. So. All right, well, I look all, forward to all that. Alpha One shows will be on that app moving forward. Which is pretty cool because there's an influx of impact talent coming to Alpha One now. Oh, you have Eddie Edwards on most of the shows, stuff like that. All right, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, it's going to be a great one. I'm looking forward to uh, to you against Moose. That's uh, that's going to be a fantastic match. And um, yeah, big fan of Alpha One Wrestling. Um, so it's on Impact Plus, but it'll still be on Independent Wrestling, or is it just going to be exclusively on Impact Plus? Or you're not sure? Exclusively on Impact Plus. Oh, okay, so it's, it's so I'm going to have to um. They jump ship. Jump ship, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to jump ship because I, I love uh, love Alpha One Wrestling. So, um, all right, that's, that's a little uh, disappointing. I'm gonna have to sign up. Well, I I do. Um, that's okay. I'll um, I'll I'll figure it out financially on my end, Josh. <laughs> so, but it's uh, let's, yeah, no, that's true. That's true. It's not that. It's not that expensive. Uh, it's well, seven ninety nine US, so it comes out to what like nine and something. But that's okay. I I'll subscribe to both so I could um. <laughs> I, I could get Alpha One and, and I gotta watch C4 as well. So, uh, but let's. I got some fan questions. If that's cool, I got uh, six fan questions, and uh, then we'll wrap it up. Um, so uh, let's uh, let's get to the fan questions. First one's from Colby Cooper, uh, Facebook. He wants to know which TNA alumni would you want to work with the most? AJ Styles. AJ Styles, AJ? when I tuned in weekly on Wednesday nights, was the person that drew me to discover a whole new type of professional wrestling. So, And I think he's probably the TNA guy. Okay. Um, what about that's the TNA uh, throwback show that's coming up? Is there anybody that, um, obviously, it, it, unfortunately, it can't be AJ Styles, uh, but is there anybody you would, um, you would like to work with on that show? I mean, bucket list, Kurt Angle. <laughs> would be the other okay. person but uh i i i haven't really given it much thought we 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 called it the motor city machine guns unfortunately i don't think that can happen america's most wanted can't come back okay. together because of contractual okay. issues and other things like that so like the two main tag teams i think we'd like to challenge are out of the picture so i have no idea what i'm doing at the show okay whether it'll be that or not but uh, all right you know all right, Steve Hudson. He's once he's asking, why why do you wear that headgear? And is, does it have something to do when you broke your neck? Nothing to do with my neck. Previous to me hurting my neck for about probably a year before, I wrestled the match and I got kicked in the ear, and my ear swelled up to the size of a baseball, and Yikes. it burst and it folded off my head. So I had to have it pinned to the side of my head and like wrapped because or else it would have healed like it would have been large for the rest of my life so i had to get surgery to make my ear look kind of presentable and normal um anyway they told me i couldn't wrestle for like three or four months until it was properly healed because if it took any trauma to the ear it could re-swell and cause me more problems i'd need more surgery but i had a booking in three weeks so i bought headgear and i started wearing headgear and it just stuck and got over and i was very fortunate for that because it gave me something to be recognizable about uh although i do have to answer this question of why i wear the headgear probably every seven to ten days (laughs) so all right sweet now now with the headgear now i don't know if this probably doesn't bother you but uh, i know there's there are some fans when they see you when there's clips on on impact uh the impact facebook page they, they'll call you rick steiner light or or uh, or discount rick steiner because you both wear headgear that's that if you see that doesn't bother you at all right that they i think it's stupid people say that but but uh how do you, how do you feel when people when if, if, you, if you've ever seen somebody call you a uh a, um, a discount uh, rick steiner or rick steiner light I mean, it doesn't bother me at all. 
yeah, yeah, <laughs> there's no, been two I, people I in the entire history of wrestling that have gotten away wearing headgear and me and rick steiner are the only two and many other people have tried <laughs> so okay there you, I'm go. Fine with that. there you go there you go uh so um vasilios from twitter wants to know if you could face any team from any promotion in the world which team would that be i think my pick would be diy okay. or the revival it's probably a tie okay i think both those tag teams are probably the best tag teams on that specific program. Um, okay. But if you ask Ethan Page, you might have a different answer. He'd say the Rock and Star right. connection, I'm sure. What about uh, Sonata and Evil or um, or the Gorillas of Destiny? Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of Sonata and Evil. Um, I, I mean, it, like dream match-wise, I could pick... Adam Page and Kenny Omega, or okay. Okada and Will Ospreay, or something like that. But sure, uh, it's just on who you think you would gel with best. I mean, if you want to book me at Wrestle Kingdom against one of those tag teams, I would be there in a heartbeat. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm sure you would. I'm sure you would be there. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Impact Blog on Twitter um, wants to know. Uh, would would you want to would you want Impact to change its name back to TNA permanently? That's his, that's his question. Yeah, I mean yes, because I think everybody's a fan of nostalgia. Uh, only issue being like maybe if we got a second program, one could be called TNA Total Nonstop Action, the other one could be called Impact Wrestling. But it's all under the same umbrella. That'd be cool. But uh, okay. you know, I'm I'm indifferent either way. I think. It, Impact uh, has done a really good job of rebuilding its brand and its name, especially over the past year or two. So I think we're on the right track either way. All right. All right. And the uh, last one's not really a question, but it's a it's, uh, uh, gentleman wanted me to tell you something. Uh, the hot step for McCray Martin. Uh, he wanted me to tell you that the price for sleeping in his guest bed is another match with him. Another match? Another match with uh, with the hot stepper. That's an expensive price. My my rate's gone up over the past year, so uh, I mean, a hotel might be cheaper. <laughs> I know yeah, when I'm he sure. had him when I had him on, he said one of his one of his first matches ever was with you, and it still remains his favorite match to date. Uh, but he said he wants another one. He said he wanted another one. Yeah, he uh, he he did my seminar at the Keep, which is the wrestling school in Gatineau, Quebec, yeah. run by uh, the Dark Order. And he was the one out of the entire seminar that impressed the most. I, I had no idea that he had only had three matches at the time compared to other people in the seminar. But, uh, yeah, we had a match. It was very good. He uh, He's well on the right track. He's got a good attitude and stuff like that, which is pretty much all I can ask for. So we'll have another match down the road, I'm sure. He's, uh, yeah, as long no, as he keeps plugging no. away and working at it and doesn't get complacent doing whatever he's doing. So. Yeah, no, he's he's doing good so far. Doing good so far. You um, you actually uh, I want to mention you recently um, debuted for uh, Kaisen Pro Wrestling in the Maritimes against Titus. Um, your thoughts on uh, Kaisen Pro Wrestling and uh, your match with Titus? Oh, the match was good. He's a very good wrestler. He's been wrestling for 14 years. He just you know, the Maritimes. There's even less eyes on the Maritimes than there is on the Ontario scene, and you know, compared to America, nobody sees anything up here. But uh, Kaizen Pro Wrestling was a great show. They sold out. They had to add like 140 chairs to the venue. They were trying to find chairs all over the place so that people could actually sit down. Uh, and everything was like it was awesome. I thought they put on a great show. I'd love to go back. Yeah, no, I know. Um, I'd, I'd love to see you against Kobe Christ. Uh, I'm a Kobe Christ fan. I think that'll be a great match as well. Hopefully, uh, one day that'll happen uh, for Kaizen you know Pro Wrestling or, or any promotion. Me too. That's the match I thought I was going to have when I originally took the booking, and I found out I wasn't wrestling him, and I was actually surprised. So, oh, I'm sure I'm sure you'll be back, and I'm sure they'll uh, you'll they'll uh, they'll book that. That, that. I would love again. I would love to see that match, uh, and I know they um they're on independent wrestling TV, so I could uh they've been putting on some good shows. So, um, fingers crossed down the road we'll see uh, Josh Alexander's against uh, Kobe Christ. Um, so anything, um, anything you want to plug uh, before we wrap this up? I know you have a new T-shirt uh, that's going to be debuting uh, soon at um, indie shows. Um, anything you want to plug? Uh, feel free. Just uh, you know, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at, at walking underscore weapon. 
Uh, follow my wife on Instagram at jchung11 because every time I'm live streamed on any Impact app or independent wrestling, she does a live kind of chat where she just talks about how great I am, and that's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, follow her. She'll be doing it Saturday for Black Label. And, uh, okay. Yeah, that's it. Just appreciate all, all the right. support. And on the Kaizen thing, like just being able to go to the Maritimes and like go all over Canada, as good as it is having this visa saying I can wrestle in America, I I love being able to travel across Canada and wrestle. I, I take a lot of pride in being a Canadian prof- professional wrestler, and I, I wish more promotions in Canada would book me, especially like West Coast stuff and all that stuff. I'll be going to Winnipeg in March again. The, the WPW okay. guys out there are great. They run really good shows. They're trying to like put on the best show possible. But, uh, yeah, the more I can get around Canada, the better. So that's my goal for this year, too. All right. Fantastic. Well, Josh, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, and I just want to say, I, you know how much it, I, I appreciate that any time I ask you to, to do a podcast, you're always receptive and you say, yes, I'll do it. And uh, I appreciate it so much that we've had – many conversations and I, I hope we have many more in the future and uh, you're fantastic you're absolutely one of my favorite in the world and um again i i can't i can't thank you enough uh, for coming on my show time and time again well, thanks louis uh, this is the only podcast i do so <laughs> is it is it really is it really i mean it's the only one i've done in the past probably year and a half so wow so I'm, I'm gonna cry, man. You're, you're, I'm getting all teared up. I'm getting all teared up now. That, that's fantastic. I, I, I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. And uh, I wish you nothing but the best of luck in the future. I'm sure you're gonna have that impact the world title uh, one day. And um, and uh, let's let's do this again soon, man. Let's do this again soon. Cool. I'll see you at lockdown. All right. See you at lockdown, man. Thank you very much. Uh, well, this has been shooting up north, uh, as heard here on the Impact Lounge. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. Again, want to thank my guest, The Walking Weapon, Josh Alexander. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.